Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Davis, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for Fear Free. Thank you for joining us for Fear Free and AirVet, a positive pairing for your practice. Presenting today are Dr. Marty Becker, founder and CEO of Fear Free, Dr. Jeff Werber, the Chief Veterinary Officer of AirVet, and Dr. Russ Brewer from Care Animal Hospital of Pleasant Prairie, a Fear Free certified practice. Dr. Becker will discuss millennial and Gen Z pet care expectations and provide an overview of Fear Free. Dr. Warber will provide an overview of AirVet and Dr. Brewer will provide his perspective as a Fear Free certified practice that uses the AirVet platform. If you have any questions during the webinar, please be sure to enter them in the Q&A box. We will have a quick Q&A session at the end of the presentation. We're so excited to have all of our doctors here with us today. So on that note, Dr. Becker, take it away. Oh, thanks everybody. Uh, I was driving to Portland, Oregon, where my son lives. I live in Northern Idaho in Bonners Ferry, and I saw a reader board that I have to share with you. It said, nobody is listening until you fart. <laughs> I thought, boy, is that ever true. By the way, my wife, it's been pretty hot in Northern Idaho. My wife actually asked me to fart the other day just so she could feel a breeze. And, and I, I tell you what, I left the toilet seat up because I, I needed an icy stare. It's so hot right now, they asked the Statue of Liberty to put her arm down. My son lives in Portland, he is a millennial. My daughter is a millennial. I used to tease my son all the time about Portland, Oregon. That's where young kids go to retire and that's where the tattoo ink never runs dry. He didn't laugh the first time and he hasn't laughed the hundredth time, but actually in having traveled the globe to 89 countries and all 50 states and all seven continents, I tell you, I've got to hand it to millennials. They have saved so many cities. For those of you that live in, in major cities or have traveled, you used to see cities gutted out, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Lexington, Kentucky, just the downtown was nothing like, uh, you know, abandoned and run down and thank golly, those millennials and Gen Z, they don't want to live way out in the suburbs, they want to live downtown. And if you're in Portland, Oregon, you got your local bartender, you got your local bud tender, you got your local hardware store, your brew pub, the place you get your hair cut. It's amazing. So uh, I just so thank and hopefully with the, the political mess we've made, they can save us from that as well. There was a, a survey last year by the AVMA Economic Summit, since they survey, a study. And one of the main things that they pointed out is millennials do not want to be lectured or talked down to. So Jeff Werber and I are about the same age, Dr. Werber and I, just he's got more hair left and also has a tan where I'm fading out to white. But both of us remember the days in practice where you literally had a pulpit. We were the only source of pet health information and products. They had to come to us and you could literally tell people what to do and they do it. That does not work with millennials or Gen Z. And they also don't expect, listen, you the veterinarian is going to tell me and I'm going to follow exactly what you say like biblical truth. It doesn't work that way as well. There's a whole group of people they take information from. Their trainer, their groomer, their dog walker, their pet sitter. In Portland, they even have uh, things where my son sends his dog for excursions. He can go to the coast to visit uh, the Oregon coast. He can go up in the mountains on hike. Then he goes to those brew pubs that are pet friendly and talks to his friends down there. They take information from all of those people, plus uh, celebrity uh, pet influencers like Martha Stewart is a celebrity pet influencer in front of Amazon, go figure that one out. And also from celebrity pets like uh, Nala Cat. If you follow Nala Cat, N-A-L-A, the most followed cat on the internet, or, or Doug the Pug, things like that. You expect to know that your pets are like kids. They're delaying marriage, they're delaying having children. And these, these dogs and cats have human names and they treat them exactly like their kids. In fact, a veteran pointed out to me the other day, you know, back 30, 40 years ago, I remember we used to love gay individuals or gay couples because their pets were their kids and they treated them as such. And so now we have that same kind of, uh, that same kind of activity, but with millennials. Do an extremely personalized service. All of us in the veterinary profession know what it's like to call a he, a she, 
to get the name wrong and how it is, but they don't want to know about parasite control for every pet. They want to know about parasite control and nutritional advice for this pet. To talk about convenience, I think I say a little later, even instant gratification takes too long. If it's not at somebody's fingertips, it's if not in a handheld device, they're going to find it somewhere else. I've written 23 books. I've sold 8 million books, but I'm never going to get to 8 million 100,000 because now people do not buy books. They want very specific information right now in the bite-sized format. And that's one of the things that AirVet provides. By the way, with AirVet, Fear Free looked at all the different providers for telehealth, telemedicine. We did our due diligence. We took our time. It was very clear that AirVet was the preferred partner by a mile. It was recommended by other people that used them, by other people that we really trust in the industry. And uh, it's just an amazing group of people that have you know, a shared belief in helping both pet parents and clinicians have a positive experience. I mean, somebody I can tell you from these conversations, like the conversations you have when nobody else is listening or looking, we put the pet first and we always put the veterinarian at the center of everything. Think of it like a wagon wheel with a, with a hub and these spokes coming out. Wherever these pets are interacting with people that take care of their pet's health, the veterinarian is always in the center as a true pet health expert. Not Dr. Google, not Dr. Bing, not the pet store employee that upsells people on super premium food and becomes a de facto pet health expert. And the great thing about, about AirVet and Fear Free working together, we can look at both physical well being and emotional well being. I've heard from telehealth companies that about 40% of all calls coming in are regarding training and behavior. They don't advertise that they want it. You know, that's not what they're for, but those people want to look at the emotional well-being of animals. And that's one of the things we can do working together. When high tech meets high touch, it's one thing to be able to have instant access with a very sophisticated platform. But what if you know the pet's name, the pet's nickname, the pet's favorite place to be scratched, uh, the pet prefers males or females, all those things you can highly personalize their, their uh, health and happiness. One of the things I learned when I started Fear Free in 2009 is that pets can't be healthy if they're not happy. Fear is the worst thing a social species can experience and it causes permanent damage to the brain. Karen overall said during this lecture that uh, people that are taking care of pets are causing repeat severe psychological damage to pets by what they were doing or not doing. Fear is caused by something painful or something disturbing, disturbing in her description. Trimming the nails too short, ouch, that hurts. Now the pet, just seeing the nail trimmers, disturbing, or coming into the practice, going through the doors, going in the back to the treatment area, ouch, disturbing. Guess what? That syringe, there was a blood draw, there was a vaccination, there was injection of serenia, there was injecting a long-acting antibiotic, there was injecting a cytopoint, hurt, pain. Now seeing the syringe, that's disturbing. So there's a whole system in place with Fear Free to remove or reduce the triggers and to, uh, to when you can't uh, ameliorate or can't do it, to give them something to actually treat the fear, anxiety, and stress. Fear Free has uh, over 100,000 people have gone through the course. We're in, I believe, in 56 countries now. And some of the highlights about Fear for this online education company, we started out just to match up with our oath to prevent or relieve animal pain and suffering. I still remember the point in that talk where Karen overall got me the Board of Behaviors from Penn. She said, every animal is the equivalent of a one-year-old child. They are taken against their will for hell care. I remember her using those words, hell care. They have no idea why any procedure benefits them. They can't anticipate or expect the relief of fear, anxiety, and stress or pain, even if it's moments away. And lastly, they have no control to flee the threat. Let me give you an example. I got my second COVID shot. I'm soon going to get my third COVID shot. I go by free will. I know why it benefits me. I know it's going to take 30 minutes. And if something were to happen and I got anxious, I could leave. In fact, the last shot I got, this woman was screaming out of there like something out of Game of Thrones, this blood-curdling scream, and 
everybody go, what the hell was that? And somebody comes, oh, it's all right. She saw the needle go in her husband's arm and, and freaked out and ran out the door. Well, look at a pet. Comes in taken against their will to the veterinary hospital. Have no idea why the vaccine benefits it. Can't anticipate or expect the relief of pharyngitis, and stress or pain. They don't know if 15 or 20 minutes are out and they can't flee the threat. Some of the highlights of Fear Free are 22 of the 30 veterinary schools now require Fear Free certification of all students before graduation. And the Association of Veterinary Tech Educators is going to make Fear Free mandatory for all veterinary technician or veterinary nursing students before graduation. So whereas we used restraint and pilot text restraint, they're learning, learning about general control, the considered approach and the touch gradient. So the benefits of fearfully implementation, one is you match up with your oath that we took, and oaths are important to prevent or relieve animal pain and suffering. It's better medicine, Steve Ettinger, the famed, probably the most famous veterinarian in the world has served as our chief medical officer. Better medicine, what's that? The vital signs are more normal. The, what if the temperature was increased because it actually had infection? What if the heart rate was increased because they had some kind of a heart condition? The blood chemistries are more normal. You don't get the leukocyte shift. You don't get the increase in glucose. What if an increase in glucose is because they're pre-diabetic? The physical exam is more normal because they're not hiding pain and sensitivity. They're not getting the fight or flight response. Limping at home, limp in the clinic. This area is sensitive at home, it's sensitive when you look at it in the clinic. They're also, you're getting ahead of the industry curve increasingly. These millennials in Gen Z, they are, they want yogurt from happy cows. They want their, their dog or cat to not just be healthy, but happy. They want these enrichment activities for their pets. There are some studies that show by NAFTA, the North American Veterinary Technician Association, that after graduation, LVTs, RVTs, CVTs, within five years, 60%, six out of 10 have left the profession. They spent $40,000, they lost two years of income, and how come six out of 10 leave? It's not the money, it's not the hours, it's the perceived brutality of practice. And in fact, right now, these, these veterinary students and the veterinary nurses coming out, they're getting six, eight job offers. If somebody is not offering fear free, what I'm hearing from recruiters is they just won't look at it. They've learned it in school, they've done it in community practice, and that's what they want to have. And talk about building stronger bonds with clients. Again, these are their kids. And it doesn't matter if it's a two-legged kid or a four-legged kid. They want to see them where they don't think they're going to die uh, by going to the veterinarian. And the very worst thing that can happen with any um, with any pet parent is for them to think they're hurting their pet by trying to help it. When you feel like you're hurting your pet by trying to help it, you're not going to take it back there again. Instead, you're going to go to on the internet or you're going to go to the pet store and be upsold on super premium food that is purportedly going to help your pet live a happy, healthy life. So let's talk about how Fear Free helps. As far as pet parents, again, it decreases their stress. They don't want to feel like they're hurting their pet by trying to help it. This thing with, their, with the veterinary staff, every person, every moment of truth, we're looking, how do we take this pet out of petrified and how do we put the treat into treatment? Everybody is looking at stuff like a community raised child. It really, one of the things, fearfreeshelters.com is free to all shelters and rescue. It is a huge success. And when these people go through it, uh, it changes their relationship with their own pet they realize it's no longer okay for my pet to have noise phobias for 4th of July fireworks or thunderstorms or gunshots or any neighborhood things that uh, interspecies aggression or excessive barking and things that there are solutions for this. And so once they have a different relationship with their pet and do enrichment activities, the pets that they place into homes, they wanna have the same thing. And they're having people look on Fear Free Happy Homes, which is complimentary to all pet parents. It's the best website on the planet for the emotional well being of animals and for enrichment. And again, fearfreeshelters.com, complimentary to all shelters and rescue. Fear Free Happy Homes, complimentary to all pet parents. And you know what? I'm 67 years old. I was going to retire right before darn care and overall ruined my life by hearing this fear free. And instead of retiring, I've been refiring and working even harder. 
but you know dogs and cats bodies are built for movement their minds are built for activity to hunt to dig to to retrieve and so one of the other parts about fear free is not just reducing fear anxiety and stress and increasing happy and calm but also increasing enrichment activities we talked about vets and staff matches up with the oath we take better medicine fewer injuries increases uh client compliance, increased staff acquisition and retention, all practice KPIs are up, study and fear-free certified practices gets other practice. And I guess number one for me, is I still practice at North Idaho Animal Hospital and it makes practice fun again, to see dogs drag the owner into the hospital and to see people try to drag them out because they're looking around for another piece of deli turkey or a baby shrimp. Again, for these pets, it decreases fear, anxiety, and stress at the vet. Did you know 85% of the cats that come into North Idaho Animal Hospital where Fear Free started will, that are not sick or injured will take a treat? 10 years ago, I heard this when Fear Free actually started in late in 2009. We took five years to do proof of concept before launching in 2016. I was told by some people that helped us develop the program, Susan Little, uh, Alana Rodan, uh, Margie Shirk, that they could get 85% of cats to take a treat. And I was thinking, you've got to be kidding me. They asked me how many percent of our cats took treats. And I go, we haven't tracked it, but I'm going to guess 10%, 15%. Well, you have to have cats come in hungry. You have to have low levels of free anxiety and stress, and you have to have incredibly tasty treats. One of the things, once people see that they're not hurting their pet by trying to help them, and especially if their pet is what drags the owner in the hospital are taking treats. You've talked about that dental cleaning. You've talked about uh, getting in and cleaning the ears out. You've talked about uh, all sorts of things that will actually follow through with it, which is nice. Our goal is to help pets live a happier, healthier, fuller life. And by extension, the human family live a happier, healthy, fuller life. And these pets get to stress their, strut their genetic stuff, the stuff that's in their brain that gives them enjoyments. In the past, zoos have been doing a better job of enrichment than most homes have, and it's great to see that changing. So now I'm going to turn it over to the, the, the veterinarian with the best hand, my partner that we've done, uh, we've done spokesperson work and been on television for years. The guy I've learned a lot from has been a great friend, my friend, my colleague, my buddy, Dr. Jeff Werber. Hey, Marty, thank you so much. And I, I, I feel the same way. Everyone out there in the audience is so lucky to, uh, to be listening to you, who you've done such an amazing, uh, you know, so much work in the profession. Um, and I, you know, I feel fortunate that I, I grew up at the same time. We've known each other for over 35, 38 years. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's cool to have someone with the vision shared. You know, we share the same vision about uh, pets and people and the bond, et cetera. And, and that's, that's sort of what, how this came to be for me as AirVet is a vision that uh, I had way back. And I've been a concierge doc for my entire career. Yep, I'm the idiot that was the, the most exciting thing for me when I started practicing was I got to have a pager. And that's right, there was no sitting as cell phones back then. And I can have clients reach me 24 seven and I loved it. Getting off that freeway to find a pay phone, answering a page, that just brought a big smile to my face because I was helping the animals that I took an oath to help. And um, I realized that I was a dinosaur. I was a dinosaur back then. I mean, even more of a dinosaur now um, is that I, I still have the access 24 seven, my clients do. And I realized that that's what clients want. They, they, and now, with, as Marty said, with millennials, um, with the Gen Zs, they, they expect it. Not that they just want it, they expect it. They expect to be talking to a professional at, when, at, at their whim. So back in 2018, uh, I had this vision to bring this type of service to let every veterinary hospital be concierge. But you got to find the right vets to do it. The vets didn't want to do it at some point. And, and, and now even the veterinary climate has changed and their more responsibility is home. With COVID, it's made it even worse. And that's why we're seeing so many inefficiencies at the, at the hospital level. So we've had over 150,000 pet parents help. This is in less than three years. Um, we are now the number one 
um, uh, rated a store in the app store 4.9. We have over five, excuse me, 6,000 reviews. And they're like, well, on the reviews, it says five stars, it's actually 4.95 or whatever. But um, that's amazing. And um, over 5,500 veterinary professionals. I mean, if, if a client were to go on and, and ask for a virtual visit on AirVet, um, we have about 5,000 vets that would be willing to take that call, which is just amazing. And what's, you know, we've also worked really, really closely with a lot of other technology providers, hospital groups and aggregators and consolidators, the buying groups, et cetera, as you can see. And one of my, my happiest um, uh, 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 partnerships that we developed is with Fear Free. Um, because anytime I get a chance to work with Marty, uh, it's great. And, and as I said, because the, 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 how we share so much of the same visions and priorities in our practices, uh, that's what makes it so great. Now, um, what's unique about us, it's, it's, it's just a great uh, connected care platform. So we deliver um, services across all audience. We have an, a separate mobile app for the pet parents, another one for the doctors, so which are dedicated to them. We have a desktop portal for practice. So basically what that does, it not only allows us to be available to our clients and to any pet parent who wants to use the app, um, that uh, we are right there anytime, day. And it's so interesting also, um, I have handled over 3,000 virtual visits. And interestingly, and this is what's so important when we talk about the, the, the Gen Zs and the millennials, many of the calls and the, the, the virtual visits that I take are coming from pet parents that are either not affiliated with a hospital at all, shame on them, or they are affiliated with a non-air vet hospital. So I, I asked them, I said, well, how did you hear about air vet? And they searched us online and they found, but it, it just shows me how badly, how important it is for these pet parents to have access to a vet 24 seven. They don't want to wait when they want it, when they need it, they need it now. And sort of that's the beauty of, of giving them that which they need. And so, you know, again, it, it's, got, it's, it's, it's a win, 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 win for everybody. And I you know, just the experience that I've had, uh, first of all, uh, you look at the pet parents. So they have access to care 24 seven. Uh, again, that makes every veterinary hospital that is partnering with Fear Free and AirVet to have access to a vet 24 seven, that makes them what we call concierge. And trust me, when it comes to concierge care and the importance of having that access and the relationship that that client, that pet parent builds with that hospital, it is invaluable. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not about the money. Guys, money comes. It's about being there, about caring. As a, a slide that I have, and I'm, I'm sure I've shared it with others or other, I've maybe gotten it from someone else. Clients don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. So when you have that availability and you provide that to your pet parents, then they really know how much you care. Peace of mind that it's a confidence that, that they are getting the best care for the vet. They're not going to Dr. Google. As Marty said, they're not getting their information from that, you know, that, that pimpled 17 year old who's working at a pet store and became a pet expert or breeders. How, how many of you have met breeders over the years that you didn't realize, but when you become a breeder, you also get your, your DVM automatically. I, I never knew that. And so, so here you are, the, that person comes in and they're coming with all this, inf even something as, as simple as vaccines, starting vaccines in six weeks, giving them every two weeks instead of four weeks. It's like, where are you getting this information from the breeders? So again, that's why it's so important that we're there. Not to mention how the convenient it is for pet parents to have that time-saving experience. As far as the vets and the staff, well, it, it, using telemedicine can save hours a day. It basically provides extraordinary client experience and it deepens the connection with the client. As I said, it builds that bond. And if anybody knows about the bond better than anybody, it's Dr. Marty. So, and you know, he, I think he coined that phrase or came pretty close to doing so. So, um, and it opens up new revenue streams. And for, for many, I mean, as, as busy as I am, and I'm still working full, full time, um, I'm still getting home earlier. And it's so great because the hours are better because you can, I can handle a lot of these visits 
at times when I'm at home, I can actually be home and chill with my 10 pets and chill with my wife and still handle calls from pet parents. And as far as the pets, oh God, it's, it's a definitely win-win because they are healthier, they're happier. Talk about stress. You know, how many times do problems appear and, and Dr. Becker made this point because of stress and fear. With telemedicine, right, a patient can be evaluated at home on live video and there's no stress, they're at home, they're relaxed. So you can really see if there's a problem or not. And sometimes it's just, it cuts times. There's, you know, also there, there, uh, we, we're hearing a lot of curbside now. And so what's going on with that is there's so many shortcomings with curbside. And when you're introducing telemedicine to curbside just changes the playing field. It, it, it's so much better. Right now, people are sitting in a car, twiddling their thumbs. The pet gets picked in, you know, taken inside by the, the, the veterinary nurse or the, the vet tech, whatever you, what you, uh, your hospital calls them. And now you're, the, the pet parent's sitting there wondering, what's going on? Can you imagine for any parents out there going in with a, with a young child and you're sitting in the doctor's office and that nurse comes out and says, okay, ma'am, we're going to take your, your little Stevie from you and uh, we'll, we'll bring him back to you in about a half hour. No way you'll, expect, you'll accept that. And yet that's what we're supposed to do with our pets, our kids? Absolutely not. So using curbside with telemedicine, the client, the pet parent is there in their car or wherever they want to sit outside and they are on their phone or their, their, their iPad. And they are engaging real time with the doctor who has their pet on their exam table with a, a, a veterinary nurse. And there's direct uh, conversation. There's direct engagement. And that makes it so much more efficient. And it's more pleasing to the parent and the pet. They hear their mom's voice. It's, it's sort of like you're there, even though you're not. And it is much more. So now that 30 minute appointment stays 30 minutes or the other way. That 30 minute appointment becomes an hour and a half appointment. You want to know why there's so much backup in vet hospitals? You want to know why that 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 hospital is saying, oh, we can't see new clients? Or, well, oh, I can make an appointment, Mrs. Smith, for you, but um, yeah, the next appointment we have is October 1st. Whoa, that's insane. And that's all because the inefficiencies at working at the practice level. Realize that I've noticed that 40% of appointments can be made virtually. And those that can't, at least the preliminary work can be done virtually. So by the time you're finished with, with a virtual call, you know exactly what you're gonna need to do. You can then true have, truly have a drop off after that. And you're gonna, the, 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 everything is pre-sold as far as the client is concerned. And of course, yes, there are gonna be times you're gonna still have to put your hands on the animal, but you can see and, and plan for much of what you're gonna to need to do before that pet parent even walks in the door or the, the dog or the pet walks in the door. And as far as, so what it does is it shortens the time that you're going to have to work with the patient because much of the work was already done via virtual visit. And we also found that 80% of follow-ups can be done virtually. So basically that's going to give you more time by, by doing the virtual follow-ups where you can set a half hour a day, an hour a day, just to do your virtual visits, do your follow-ups, people that have questions. Not only that, it, now you monetize it. It's how, how many times do we spend on, how much time we spend on the phone with the client after hours with that long sheet of, of messages that came in during the day. And now you take time and answering those questions and we don't get paid. And a lot of times you're solving the problem for them. And there's, there's no, talk to your lawyer, pick up the phone and call your lawyer, spend 15 minutes on the phone, see if you don't get a bill. How about your accountant? See if you don't get a bill. And we as veterinarians that, that work so hard to get where we are doing, we are giving our expertise away for free. With telemedicine, we get compensated for our time. And clients, the, the millennials, the Gen Zs, they are more than willing to pay for it because we're saving them time as well and money. That $30 appointment on a, on a virtual exam is going to be $75 if they walk into the office. And then you find out they didn't even have to come in. So uh, I am just really so thrilled to be working here with, uh, with Marty. And, and um, though I haven't face-to-face -face met Dr. Brewer, um, we, he is a great, great um, uh, uh, source of information to all of us because he has now done both. He is a fear-free certified doc and he is employed and using AirVet on daily in his practice. So excited to have you join us, Dr. Brewer. Hi.
Oh, thank you, Dr. Werber. Yeah, no, I, I haven't had a chance to meet with you face to face. I have met uh, Brandon virtually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so it's been, you know, it's uh, been a pleasure for sure. Yeah, well, Brandon's the, Brandon's the whiz that, that took this vision of giving clients that, that experience and turned it into the, the number one telemedicine platform that we are right now. And kudos to him. And not just because he's my son. In fact, I remember Marty uh, chiming in uh, that, that he used to love me. He doesn't love me anymore. He loves Brandon. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I, you should certainly be proud of him. I, the uh, effort that he's put into it. I, it He's actually part of the reason that we started uh, looking at AirVet originally, because I had a conversation with him back in 2019, way before anybody was forecasting a pandemic. And right, absolutely. he was chatting with me about how we as veterinarians have been doing telemedicine for as long as we've been doing veterinary medicine, because as right. long as the telephone has been in service. And, and it kind of changed my mind that I had never thought about that being actual telemedicine. So We'd started looking at it back then, but it, we had a lot of other things going on here. So I'd put a pin in it. And of course, COVID hits in March of, um, you know, 2020. And Dr. Wilsey, who's my wife, we work here in the practice together. And she said to me, that telemedicine app you were looking at, who is that? Call them and get this going. So uh, <laughs> it went from the back burner to the front burner in about, you know, a blink of an eye. And uh, we became Fear Free Certified oh back in 2018 so before this as a practice um and that was basically just because one of our associates came to us and she has a huge passion for fear free and and helping the uh pets be better and sort of like uh, marty having his eyes sort of peeled open to the realities of fear free for pets and it being better for them and then in turn being better for the owner and being better for us as practitioners and practices, um, we we allowed her to kind of help guide us into that. And you know, people have asked me before, what would I do anything different with that? And I said, yeah, we could have started that about 25 years ago when I started practicing. Um, but the merger of AirVet and Fear Free together, it's really sort of a perfect combination uh, when you have the patient that has a high FAS. I can think of two cases I've been involved in personally. Uh, one is that German shepherd that we all know that, you know, is extremely anxious when they come in and protective of the owner to the point that you kind of fear for your life when you see his name on the schedule. <laughs> um, and he came in and we had him, we had him, you know, hooked up with all the pre-visit pharmaceuticals that were standard and he still was not going to come in. We had to do a recheck on his skin. And I said, you know what? And this is when we had just started AirVet. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have you guys download this app while you're sitting out in our parking lot. And um, once you get it downloaded, call me back and then we'll, we'll start a case. And we started the case. I actually was able to see this dog's skin better than I've ever been able to see it before. Because he sat in the back of the extended, the extra cab of the pickup and the owners could move the camera around. Dog was sitting back there panting. And, you know, as far as just happy, smile on his face, looking at everybody else going on, he... He didn't care because nobody was coming out to get him out of his car to bring him inside. And he absolutely enjoyed that. And I'm like, and from now on, if we don't have to touch him, we're going to be doing virtual calls for him because we can do that. Uh, there's another 105 pound Rottweiler that had a corneal abrasion that we had been monitoring. And uh, he about had to be knocked out every time he would come in because his, his anxiety was, <laughs> his trigger is, staring him in the eye um and when you've got an eye abrasion it's kind of hard not to look at the eye so we were trying to figure out how to work with his anxiety to get him in but the owner could do that from home and it was it was so special for them to be able to show us what was going on and we could guide them through the process and the reality was you know one of the things that we get concerned about as practice owners is like well okay that's fine you know phone consultations but how do you get paid for that well AirVet allows you to monetize that business so it's not you're not out your you're not out your time you're being compensated for that so and the patients you know in this instances are fear free um, and it's just, you know, it's, it literally is one of those key tools that we can add to our regimen to allow those dogs and cats that have really high FASs 
uh, that we don't have to physically touch. We can do virtual exams with them and, and get a much better exam on them. So um, give us some more examples, if you have them, of just how um, it's been helping not so much you and the pet, but, but really the client experience. I think the client experience uh, curbside, I, you're absolutely right. It was, I was uh, one of our staff had posted a comedian bit on uh, our internal chat channel the other day of this guy that said, has anybody taken their dog to a vet during the pandemic? He said, you know, somebody in a mask walks out, takes your dog out of your car, takes him in, into the vet clinic. And then about 30 minutes later, you get a phone call from somebody else. He said, now I'm not really gender sensitive. He said, but you know, my, my dog's a boy. And when the doctor called me and said, so we took a look at her and he said, it's going to be $1,500 to do this. At the end. He goes, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling kind of like I didn't have a very thorough exam done. <laughs> when when you can't even get the gender right because there's some major you know major things going on there so you know they don't see what we're doing right you go virtual with air vet they are now in the exam room with you and they can see everything that you're doing you can have a conversation with them you can be looking at the cat or dog and go you know what this <laughs> the lump exam was the worst one to do virtual because the client would say okay point to the you know, shoulder area and say, okay, there's a lump there. And the technician comes in and they go, oh, I don't know. They said somewhere in the shoulder and you, you can't find it and you can't diagnose that over the phone. But when they're in air vet, you can say, okay, so what I found here is this lump here. Is this the one that you're you know, talking about? They, Absolutely. And you, you have a much more consistent dialogue. And that's the thing that we found during, during the pandemic was that the, the curbside portion of this, um, just being phone calls was major loss of communication led to a lot of problems. Uh, the things that we are looking at transitioning into are teletriage and the dental rechecks and, and the callbacks and those callbacks that need maybe a little patient visit, but you don't want to use up a time slot because we're all being booked right now and overbooked because our, you know, we're, everybody went out and adopted a pet during the pandemic. And so we now have more patients than we seemingly can shake a stick at, which is not a bad thing, but how do you see them all? Uh, so certainly the virtual aspect of AirVet is allowing us to see some of those patients without having, and it allows the client to have that interaction with us that they really want. Um, and we are, then we're, it's not just them not knowing who they're talking to, they can see us. And that's one of the things today in the webinar, you're not seeing us talk. So I guarantee you, we're all here, we're all real people, but it's, you know, that's, that's part of it when you don't see that video. Um, but when that video is there and you're able to talk to that person, you, you have a much better connection with them, much better communication and overall just a much better experience. And as far as your, um, uh, the client's reactions to you uh, being a fear-free practice, um, how's that helped? Has it helped? I mean, I, I hear just the major, major pluses from a client's well, so perspective and the pet. We lose, we lose the occasional client that doesn't, that doesn't buy into it. I mean, you know, you guys have been practicing a bit longer than I have, but we've all had those clients where, you know, back in the day, right. It's like, you know, the dog's coming in for the nail trim, the dog's having a nail trim and that's, and that's the way it is. Well, right. no, that's not the way it is now. The way it is now is that we're going to work so that the dog doesn't care we're trimming its nails. And it's not gonna be a super anxious experience. And, and if we have to aid that process with some sedatives, uh, either in a pre-visit pharmaceutical form, or it, if it really is one of those situations where we can't work through social visits and, and desensitization, we can ultimately use some injectable sedatives to try to you know, at least keep him as stress-free as possible. But the reality of it is, is that we're doing this so that they don't have that stressful event. And it, it makes, I would say, for every client that we come have that says, I don't want to come in anymore because you, you guys can't do nail trims, we're going to gain 10. Right. Because there are 10 people that want to come in because of us doing that, because they understand that we're, we care about their pet as much as they do. Um, because that, that's the ultimate thing is that we're all in this because we do care about the pets and certainly it helps with staff. Um, it, it's, if you can lower the, the, um, patient FAS, you lower, you lower the staff FAS and it just creates a, a calmer environment to work in. 
Um, I'm not a, I'm not a big Zen, you know, person, but it certainly creates a Zen environment. You, you feel that there's a sort of a flow to it that just is, is not, it's, it's a little less hurried uh, because you can't, you can't hurry those appointments because the, you, the patient is the center of the focus. And so it's not just get them in, get them up on the table, get the vaccine. No, there's some, you have to respect that they're here and they're, they're here so that you can help them, but they, you need to help them understand that you're helping them. And, you know, that's works through treats and pheromones and, you know, calming music and all the things that we do to tr try to create, you know, some of the soundproofing things that we've done in the building. And certainly, you know, um, it aids in uh, staff hiring because the certainly clients, uh, excuse me, technicians and veterinarians that are looking for jobs, they're looking for fear-free practices now. And I think the one thing that hadn't dawned on me until today when I was thinking about this webinar is that we have gone now over a year without, and I'm gonna, my OSHA person's gonna kick me um, for saying this, but we've gone over a year without a, a OSHA accident report. So we've had no bites, no scratches, and it, this is not because we're, you know, going extra gung-ho and muzzles and everything. No, this is because we are, we are getting those patients to understand that we're here to help them and it's less stressful. So their less fear keeps us safe. That's great. So uh, I, 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 it sounds like you're uh, very happy that you are, uh, you've made that, that uh, marriage between fear free and air vet. Uh, absolutely. Um, and, and if we can figure out more ways, I know Brandon and his team are always working on trying to come up with, you know, different ways and things that we can use, uh, to do, you know, with AirVet. Uh, I think it's, it's just a tool that's going to continue to morph. Um, you, you were talking about your pager. Uh, we uh -huh. had a pager when, when we first started, we took our own emergencies and, and then we transitioned into just a cell phone for after hours consultation. Well, now. Uh, instead of that, you know, free cell phone call, we're actually transitioning over to doing just our clientele for an after hours consultation on AirVet. And that way we can, you know, if we do get the wake up call at 2 a.m., there's, you know, there's some compensation for it. It's not just a phone call. That it's, <laughs> can you schedule an appointment for me? Nope. Sorry, we can't do that right now. But you know, it, it, um, It's interesting is how much the client, you know, you, when, when you have the recording, and hi, thank you for calling XYZ Animal Hospital. The hospital is closed. If you have an emergency, go to, you know, so-and-so animal emergency. Well, guess what? First of all, that wait is now upwards of 10 to 12 hours oh, in many cases. It's horrible. Yeah. Secondly, secondly, um, and I, I have, as I said, over my 3,000 virtual visits, I think I've had to send less than 100 to emergency. Sure. Most yeah. emergencies, and I put that in quotes, are not. And if, if there are pet parents had somebody to talk to at that hour, and it's an hour that you, doctor, don't want to take a call, you don't want to take that visit, but there are many air vet docs out there that will, including idiot over here, me, um, then, then your client will not have to spend money there. Instead, they'll spend less money with you if needed the next day or the next you know, couple of days. So it's a it's a win 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 for everybody, and I guarantee when when pet parents walk into that emergency to a veterinarian they do not know or do not trust, they're not only is their pet anxious, they are anxious. And then when they oh, get absolutely. that bill, or they come out and say, "You, um, you, uh, uh, we will not look at your pet until you leave us a deposit of five hundred dollars," that that's that's a problem. So uh, I think the clients. Uh, pet parents really, really love um, the, the the combo. Um, we we know the air vet has, um, I mean, fear free has proven itself, and now we're we're watching and seeing that air vet is proving itself. Well, it's it's. I mean, it, it's certainly worthwhile to have it implemented. I think you know the, and I, you know, I was excited to see that uh, fear free has now um, picked up air vet as a preferred provider because it certainly is a top quality telemedicine app. Um, and, it, and it merges in perfectly with the, with the mission of Fear Free. Um, I agreed, 100%. You guys, do you guys have any other questions? I, I, you know, I guess I would say the one question that has come up a couple of times with Fear Free 
and uh, Ayurveda is that people are always asking, well, how do you implement it? And it really takes um, ownership of the practice to, to, you know, say, yes, we're going to do this. And then, and then of course you need to have the rest of the staff buy in. Of course, it's not, uh, some of it is, is that you, we've, we have a culture here that we always say, you know, we're going to do new things and, and they know this. So we're not, we're not sitting back and just kind of doing the same thing. There's always, <laughs> I think sometimes they're like, you know, could we maybe go a month or two without something changing to new? Um, <laughs> but they know that if we start something, we're going to do it for a month before we say it works or doesn't work, or we might do it for two months before we say it works or doesn't work. And then it may work, but maybe we're just going to tweak it a little bit, change it. Um, but that's really the whole thing is that you have to set out a plan and say, here, this is what we're going to do. And we had protocols written out for AirVet when we started using it for curbside. And we basically just used it as a, as a um, process. And I know that uh, AirVet has, if anybody's looking at implementing it, they have a great um, set of you know tools to help you implement that but it's uh it's literally just a matter of finding out where that process is going to go if you're going to use it curbside or if you're going to use it for triage or dental rechecks um it's it you know ask the folks there because they'll help you implement it because they've got a lot of tools they're a lot of they use they picked a lot of brains on practices that have implemented it Right. And I know like Fear Free has its certification. Airbit doesn't have a certification, but uh, definitely uh, we are there to help practices implement it, uh, see the benefits. And um, if, you know, it, uh, some of our practices are, are they're, they're doing 80% of it right, having some uh, problems, they get the help. The, the support is there, um, I mean, literally 24 7. Yep. Any other questions? Let's see. I wanted to I wanted to say something, Doctor Brewer. This is this is uh, Marty Becker again. You inspire me. Just your your. I have no idea how old you are. I've never met you, but you know, talking about you and your wife and the way you you built a practice. You took your own calls and the things you did. And looking at your logo, I just you can tell there's a lot of attention paid to the little things that you do, but. I can just imagine that you and your wife leading this team of inspired people and the way you communicate with people, uh, the way you talked about how you utilize AirVet, I just found myself, God, I was smiling so wide I could eat a banana sideways here at a, I stopped on, on my way to Portland to see our son for a little Oregon trip and I stopped at a hotel along the way. And, you know, one of the things I think we all learn from some people say, well, fear free is me, fear free is we. God, I was not gifted. Like you have 256 people on the advisory group. The only person that I think is gifted is Temple Grandin. We've got 65 board of behaviorists, 12 board of anesthesiologists, and all sorts of subject matter experts. Temple Grandin is truly gifted, but before Karen Overall gave her talk, hell, I was stretching cats out into two zip codes. You know, their head was yeah. in. San Francisco and their ass was in Oakland, never thought a thing of it or witnessed and was part of pilot Tech's restraint to do a nail trim or a blood draw. And, and I just thought, God, if people heard what I heard that day, you should never know. Uh, I always just thought that stuff was collateral damage and there wasn't anything you could do. You could do. But I, I wanted to say one thing, you know, we learn from each other, that thing about the you know, we all see the ones where the FAS level goes up and it's four or five. And you think to yourself, uh, in the past, what we would have done is just take it at the back. That way we could have added enough people into the rugby scrum to get it done. And if something bad were to happen, they wouldn't have seen it. And they wouldn't have known if they heard some distress, is that my pet or maybe it's not my pet. It's part of that so many times in, in hospitals, but there's a, a veterinarian in, in South Carolina named Julie Reck, and she taught me something that I now use. And I just say, you know, let's, I'll just make this up. Mrs. Uh, and, and Mrs. Brewer, we're not going to sacrifice your pet's long-term emotional well-being for the convenience of getting this done today. We, we've got three options. We can retreat and come back an, another day a different way with pre-visit pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, compression garments. We can, if you have time to wait or you can leave it, use something orally and give it 30 minutes to 60 minutes to work. 
or we can go great go straight to something intravenously to calm your pet we say calm instead of sedate yeah. God, that, that works so well it's like rehearse spontaneity you know jeff and i've talked over the years doing media work you 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 got to make it sound like you just made it up but you've got these little pearls that you use to communicate it and you had several things you said uh, dr brewer during your talk that i wrote down that i thought were so so well done so thank you for your 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 passion and your commitment to that uh, meant, a lot, meant a lot just hearing it from you we did have a question come through. They are wondering, is it is AirVet legal in states that require a veterinary client patient relationship for telemedicine? Okay, let me uh, let me get to that. So in fact, I was just gonna, I saw it on the screen. I was gonna just uh, volunteer to answer that. So the VCPR, as we know, most states uh, have it and there are certain things we are and are not allowed to do uh, without a VCPR. Now, um, we like to call telemedicine, telemedicine, but actually oftentimes it's tele-advice, um, it's tele-information, better getting it from us than Dr. Google. And so what, what I've done is de depending on in, in California, we cannot prescribe medication. Uh, we cannot obviously um, uh, uh, do uh, make a diagnosis, but there's a lot and a lot of ways to say something. It's not what you say, sometimes it's how you say it. So if, if for example, I'm dealing with something and uh, I said, you know, I, I can't tell you for sure that that's Buffy's problem. But, you know, interestingly, I had a case two weeks ago at my office and presented the same way that Buffy is right now. This is what it turned out to be. So that's why that is a concern of mine, something you might want to talk to your veterinarian about. Um, if it comes to um, a recommending a, a home remedy, something that, that is safe. Uh, we could say, look, I, I can't tell you to go ahead and give, you know, give Bowser um, that that uh, cough syrup. But um, if, if, if Bowser was my patient and you were, were my client, I would tell you that that's what I would recommend. And I said, I can't I, I can't tell you to do it because I've never put my hands on Bowser. And so you, you, we're just we are there to educate. We're there to inform. And a lot of times that's enough to put a client at ease so they can wait and see their veterinarian. Now also after at, the, at each call, after a virtual visit is done, the veterinarian takes, writes case notes. And those case notes go to the actual caller, the pet parent, as well as if they are part of the, the um, air vet platform, their hospital, then their doctor will get the same summary so the next morning I can come in and get a summary about one of my clients who had spoken to one of our other air vet doctors. And I can call that client. So I say, oh, I see you spoke to Dr. Smith uh, last night. And you know what? I, I, I see what, what he told you. I agree. Um, uh, I still would like you to come in because I think we may need something. So we, we become a team. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, there is no fear, pardon the, the, the fear-free pun, of losing a client to another doctor because with AirVet, if the um, uh, client, the caller has is, or is from an AirVet hospital, we will never match that call in a virtual visit to another doctor within 50 miles of their home hospital. So we're, we, we become an extension of a practice. We're not there to take business away. We're there to save you the business. We're there to take care of your client at times when you are unable to and make sure that we're doing it within legal uh, limits. So um, uh, the there is uh, you know, I've done, as I said, 3000 virtual visits and never crossed that line. And clients, that, that's why we have the five star reviews that we have in 6000, practically 6000 of them, because we're doing it right. And clients absolutely love it. And I can't say how many times I'll ask a client, where did you hear about us? And they say, oh, my friend, my friend used you and just loved you. So um, a lot can be handled, believe it or not, outside of the VCPR without breaking any rules. Oh, there was a question earlier about um, practice management software. That is um, the best uh, to, to get a hold of. Uh, you can send that to um, AirVet. Um, we, yes, we are um, working on um, doing some, having some PIMS and some uh, 
um, uh, ability to work within uh, patient software. So that's uh, up and coming. Perfect. And then another question came through. How did you use AirVet for ER triage? So um, when I, uh, Ian, so first of all, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a hundred thousand words. So be able to see an, an animal, see the limp, see, look at their breathing. Uh, a still picture is, is great, but there's nothing beats real time video. So um, if it's something I can see gum color, I can see the behavior, I can see the breathing pattern, I can see the, see what the, the, the abdomen looks like. So if, and, and we are, we teach our air vet doctors, if there is any doubt, any doubt, get them to the emergency. And, you know, one of the things that we, the, the information that we get, we uh, take down when a hospital becomes an air vet hospital is what emergency facilities do you recommend? Because we want to send them to the emergency facilities that you like. And if you have that after hours message that says not go to rush to emergency, but to, you know, go, go on and put a, make a, a request on, on AirVet because they've already downloaded the app when the hospital becomes an AirVet hospital, that's what they ask them to do is reach out to their client base and make sure they all have downloaded the app. Well, now we need to know, they need to know what hospital to go to in the case of an emergency. So it's good to have all that information before us. Um, so when a, when a hospital registers, we can send that client if we believe that it's, and also when, when you, a, a case is open on an air vet, it's not just a one case you're out. We have 72 hours that that case remains open. So the pet parent can go onto the app, click on open cases, they'll see it's right there. And that takes, they can chat their veterinarian who they spoke to. And that can give that veterinarian a second look if needed. And oftentimes I will tell a, a, a caller uh, during my virtual visit, you know what, I'm, I'm still not, not convinced it's an emergency. I'll tell you what, let's give it another 15, 20 minutes. If things change for the worst, you can just chat me back. I will call you back. I will get back, you, uh, get back to you on the video and we'll have another virtual visit. And if we need to, I will then go ahead and refer them to the emergency hospital. Um, fortunately, um, we have not had, so I know of a case where a veterinarian who took a, a virtual visit on AirVet um, misled a client. So uh, look, we're always gonna err in the direction of safety. Great, thank you. The next question is, we see avian and exotics. Do you have vets able to field these calls? That's a great question and we are working on, we are creating right now a list of specialists that if one of our doctors, myself included, because I don't do exotics, and though I love birds, I, you know, it, it's become such a, such a subspecialty, um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna me not mess with them. So we are, developing a list for our air vet hospitals of specialists that we can reach and uh, to be able to uh, have a consult with them. Uh, of course, it's going to be um, probably more than the, the normal $30 it is for a, a consult right now, but um, at least we'll be able to handle. And uh, stay tuned. We will let, we'll be letting everybody know about that, but we are in the process right now of creating our uh, specialty partners. Awesome, thank you. Well, if there are no more questions, we'll wrap up. So thank you so much, doctors. And thank you everyone for joining the webinar tonight. To learn more about our collaboration, please visit airvet.com slash fearfree or email demo at airvet.com or wags at fearfreepets.com. You'll be able to find a recording of this webinar on fearfreepets.com slash webinars within the next week. Thanks again and have a great night. Thank you.